New York to London in 90 minutes. Seattle to Tokyo, less than three hours. That is the promise of hypersonic travel. By now, you've probably heard of the push to bring back supersonic flight to commercial aviation. That, of course, has been nothing but a memory since the Concorde made its last commercial flight in 2003. Companies like Boom Supersonic, Boeing, and Lockheed Martin, just to name a few, are all investing in a future where passengers careen through the skies at supersonic speeds. And even though that future isn't even here yet, some are looking beyond supersonic. So today, let's talk about hypersonic travel, what it is, where it stands today, and what it could mean for the future of commercial aviation. Now I'll put time codes below if you wanna skip around to different chapters. So what exactly is hypersonic flight? It's generally defined as flying at a speed greater than Mach 5, that's about 3,800 miles per hour, or five times the speed of sound. For reference, the Concorde flew at about Mach 2, taking it from New York to London in three and a half hours. Now let's look at a little bit of hypersonic history. Humans have technically been flying at hypersonic speeds since the early 60s, when we started sending people to space. The first person was a Russian cosmonaut during the world's first orbital flight in April 1961. Later that year, U.S. Air Force Major Robert White flew the X-15 rocket-powered aircraft faster than Mach 6. Mach. Now, the space shuttle's NASA astronauts started flying in the 1980s went hypersonic every time it returned to Earth. Three, two, one, launch, launch, launch. Fast forward to 2004, NASA's experimental space plane, the X-43A, set a new airspeed record. Guidance on, we are supersonic. This unmanned plane and its new scramjet engine hit Mach 9.6, close to 7,000 miles per hour, or put another way, about a mile per second. And while NASA and the military continue to build on existing hypersonic research, the commercial reality feels pretty far off. First of all, there is still a lot that scientists don't understand about the physics of hypersonic travel. And there are a host of challenges we do understand, from building an engine that can not only accelerate a vehicle to hypersonic speeds, but maintain that speed efficiently, to building the vehicle that can actually withstand the incredible amount of heat that would be generated. And that's not even considering that infamous sonic boom that happens every time an aircraft breaks the sound barrier. Now, we're not going to get into all of that today. Today, I want to look at three companies that are taking on the challenge of commercial hypersonic flight and see where they stand right now. Let's start with Hermius. Last month, this Atlanta-based company announced it closed $100 million in Series B funding. This after it revealed the first non-flying prototype of its quarter-horse aircraft last fall. Hypersonics needs a unifying vision. That vision should be accelerating the global human transportation network. Our goal is to complete that challenge, to fly passengers across oceans at hypersonic speeds before this young decade is out. The Quarter Horse is a remotely piloted demonstrator jet intended to prove the company's tech, maybe most notably its Chimera engine. Man to 103. Copy, to 103. Hermes calls it a turbine-based combined cycle engine. Essentially, it combines a conventional jet engine with what's known as a ramjet. That's a special type of engine that uses the aircraft's motion to draw in air for combustion. There's no moving parts. Next up, Hermes says it plans to build three flight-capable quarter horse jets and begin flight testing in 2023. And the company says it does expect the quarter horse to be able to hit Mach 5. After that, Hermes moves on to build Dark Horse. The company told CNBC, Dark Horse will be capable of sustained hypersonic flight and able to carry cargo or payloads. That would be followed by the Halkion, the company's hypersonic commercial passenger jet. Hermia says it will carry 20 passengers and have a range of 4,600 miles. The company is hoping to have this aircraft in the air for its first test flight in 2029. Next up, 
Venus Aerospace, operating out of Houston, Texas. Venus hasn't said quite as much about their hypersonic vehicle. Here's what we do know. The company's catchphrase is home by dinner. The idea there is you could fly from LA to Tokyo for a business meeting and be back to LA in time for dinner. We haven't seen images or renderings of what Venus's aircraft will look like, but Venus says it will seat 12 people, fly at Mach 5 on the edge of the atmosphere, and be a zero carbon emission vehicle. The company says they'll use two engines, a jet engine to get the aircraft off the ground and to cruise altitude, then rocket engines take it to about Mach 9. In an interview with Cheddar News, Venus's CEO said she hopes the aircraft is finished within five years, then they'd begin the certification process, which could be another five years. So far, Venus has raised $33 million in funding and says it secured government contracts. Chinese startup Space Transportation showed us its vision with this animated video it put on the web a few weeks ago. It shows passengers boarding a 12-seater aircraft linked to the belly of a rocket-like booster. vehicle separates before pushing itself to cruising altitude in a process similar to how Virgin Galactic launches its spaceship 2. Release, release, release. Fire. Fire. Space transportation is promising Shanghai to New York in under two hours. The company has raised about $46 million, says it hopes to launch its first test flight in 2025 then a, quote, complete full-scale global hypersonic vehicle flight by 2030. So what we just saw was three very different approaches to hypersonic passenger flight, but all are projecting a similar timeline for when the actual passenger flights would be up and running. What about cost? What would it take it on any of these aircraft actually set you back? It's of course pretty hard to answer given how far we are from any of these being a reality. Hermes has said a one-way flight from New York to London would cost around $3,000, but of course a lot can change in 10 years or more. But one thing is certain, this technology is coming. It's just a matter of when. So when do you think it'll be here? Is 2030 realistic? Let me know, comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And to learn more about supersonic flight, check out these two videos here. I'll see you in the future.